In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you about one of my favorite machine learning algorithms, and that is genetic algorithms. I love it because it is really simple once you learn what it is and start to apply it, and yet it produces amazing results. And we're going to use it to train some race cars, as you can see on the screen here. Now, before I actually explain to you what genetic algorithms are, I just want to let you know that this particular starter project that you're going to get is one that is put together in my artificial intelligence course for beginners which you can find in the links that I'm giving you here and we actually put these cars together from scratch with all of the unity vehicle physics so we're kind of jumping off from the point with this starter project where the car has just been created and drives around the track automatically. But what we're interested in is finding out what are the best settings for the car so it will actually drive around the track in the fastest time with the least number of crashes. Okay, so before we get started, I'm going to show you a clip from my machine learning course which will explain to you what genetic algorithms are. Then we'll come back and start implementing them for our cars. The field of evolutionary computing examines intelligence through environmental adaption and survival. It attempts to simulate the process of evolution by implementing concepts such as selection, reproduction and mutation. In short, it endeavours to replicate the genetic process involved in biological evolution computationally. Genetics concentrates on the transmission of traits from parent to offspring. It not only examines how physical characteristics such as hair and eye colour are passed to the next generation, but it also observes the transmission of behavioural traits such as temperament and intelligence. All cells in all living beings, with the exception of some viruses, store these traits in chromosomes. Chromosomes are strands of DNA molecules present in the nuclear of cells. A chromosome is divided into a number of subparts called genes. Genes are encoded with specific traits such as hair colour, height and intellect. Each specific gene, such as that for blood type, is located in the same location on associated chromosomes in other beings of the same species. Evolutionary computing simulates the combining of chromosomes through reproduction to produce offspring. Each gene in a digital chromosome represents a binary value or basic function process. A population is created with anywhere between 100 and many thousand of individual organisms, where each individual is represented usually by a single chromosome. The number of genes in an organism will depend on its application. The population is put through its paces in a testing environment in which the organisms must perform. At the end of the test, each organism is evaluated on how well it performed. The level of performance is measured by a fitness test. This test might be based on how fast the organism completed a certain task, how many weapons it has accumulated, or how many human players it has defeated in a game. The test can be whatever the programmer deems is the best judgment of a fit organism. Once the test is complete, the failures get killed off and the best organisms remain. These organisms are then bred to create new organisms, which make up a new second generation. Once breeding is complete, first generation organisms are discarded and the new generation is put through its paces before being tested again and then bred. The process continues until an optimal population has been achieved. Let's take a look at an example from nature. Camouflage. In nature, many animals have developed colours that allow them to hide from prey. Take for example the moth. Most moths are brown, dull colours that allow them to become invisible on objects of similar colour such as trees. The theory of survival of the fittest suggests that once there were moths of all sorts of colours, but the ones easily seen by predators would have been eaten before they had time to reproduce. That would leave the darker coloured moths left to produce the next population. Since colour is specified in the genes, the colour of the parents is passed down to the offspring. Over time, this process ends up with the moth that hides the best in its particular environment. So how does this work in a program? Let's take a look. Here we have a game of click on the brightest. It's a match against a population of virtual people and the player. The colours of each little person are stored internally as the values red, green and blue that are set randomly at the start. 
The player has to click on the little people one by one, working from the brightest to the dullest. Each little person records how long it was before they were clicked on. The next generation of people is generated from the fittest people in the previous population. Each person is bred with every other to produce two offspring. The offspring receive red, green and blue values that are a mix of those from their parents. Which trait is inherited from which parent is left to chance. The children in the next generation undergo the same process. Those chosen last are fittest and survive to breed the next generation. This evolution continues until an optimal population that no longer changes is reached. Without any modification to the program, the same game can be played again where the player leaves green people until last. In this case, green is the fittest colour and over the generations the entire population will eventually become green. Here we say that the genetic algorithm is able to learn which colour is preferred by any particular player. So with this knowledge of genetic algorithms under your belt, let's go ahead with our practical example and put it into practice in Unity for some car racing. To follow along with this tutorial, you'll need a copy of Unity 2021.3, though what we're doing in here has worked over many different versions of Unity, and I can't see why it won't continue into the future unless Unity does change its physics system. But anyway, bring in the starter package that is linked here, which is on my resources section website. And what you're gonna do when you drag it in, you'll find a car AI scene. If you double click on that and open it up, you'll end up with this racetrack that's in here and also a car. Now you'll see that there's this car that's turned off in the inspector. Let's just turn that back on and it's just down here now as i said this is sort of the ending position in my ai course where we've created a car that will automatically drive around this track so let me just give you a bit of an overview of what we're finding in this file everything that's already existing you don't really need to modify or change we're just going to add to it so we've got this car now the most important things with this car is if you have a look in the inspector the ai controller script again you don't need to change this but all of these different settings are in here are driving the car so you've got like the steering sensitivity how far to look ahead and now that's important as far as when the car decides it's going to turn uh, maximum torque steer angle brake torque acceleration into the corner braking into the corner all of those sorts of values there's also a value down the bottom here for fitness now as you saw in that clip that I just showed you. Fitness is how we're going to judge how good each car is that we create. Now at this point, as soon as you've loaded it up, if you press play, you'll find that the car starts to drive around the track. Now it's gonna use the settings in AI controller that I've put together just through my own personal trial and effort to get it around the track without it crashing too many times. The way it's currently getting around the track, besides using these physics settings in the AI controller, is that the track has a circuit of waypoints on it. And if you click on the circuit in the hierarchy, you'll see there's an array of waypoints. And if you actually drop that down, you'll see all the waypoints. Now the waypoints have the mesh renderers turned off. If you select all of them, and turn the mesh renders on, you'll see where those waypoints are. So there's this little cube markers that allow the car to basically go around the track. So when I finished this tutorial for my AI course, I kind of thought, well, instead of us trying to figure out what is the best settings for that AI controller, we could use a genetic algorithm to figure it out for themselves. So then I thought this would make a great tutorial to show you how genetic algorithms work. Okay, so I'm just going to turn off my waypoints because we don't really need to see them. And we're going to start by, uh, first of all, turning off our car here as well. So turn that off. There's a prefab of the car that you'll be using sitting down in your assets down here. We're going to add in a empty and this will be our car manager. And this car manager is going to spawn 
a certain amount of cars. Now we'll use the car manager as the starting position. So once you've added it in, find out where it is on the track. Okay, so it should be sort of around there. I guess it depends on where you had your scene view focused on. This is about the starting position that I had the car before. So if I turn that car back on, you can see that it is there. Okay, so this is my car manager. Now we're going to use the car manager's forward axis as well as the direction that you should start driving. So instead of like getting the cars to figure out that they're actually facing in the wrong direction, which is not part of uh, this tutorial, we'll just give them a little bit of a head start by rotating that around. Now it has to go to minus 90 so that that forward axis is pointing in the direction you want the cars to go. Okay, so now we've got that, we will spawn our cars. In the project, I'm going to go create C Sharp script and we'll call it our spawn cars. Then we will attach that to the car manager. And then we're going to open it up and get it to create a whole bunch of cars. So in Visual Studio, when that finishes loading, let's just put up here at the top, we're going to put in a public int for the number of cars that we want. And let's set that to 50. And then we'll put in a public game object for car prefab. And we'll set that in the inspector. Then in the start, we'll do a four int i equals zero, i is a less than num cars i plus plus and then inside of our for loop we'll instantiate these cars and set them to be at the position of this car manager and facing in the same direction. Okay so we're going to go here uh, instantiate we're going to instantiate car prefab at the position of this object, so transform dot position, and in the rotation of this object, so transform dot rotation. Okay, like that. It's pretty much all we need to do. Okay, so just save that, and we'll flip back into Unity. Now, if we have a look at the car for one second, you don't need to turn it on or anything. We're going to have a look that it's got a rigid body and it's got a box collider on it. The car itself has got other colliders and things going on as well. But I just thought it'd be nice if we turn on the physics for this, um, which means all the cars are going to pretty much collide with each other. And that's going to cause a great big explosion of cars. So uh, let's just zoom out here. We're going to get our car prefab from our project and drag and drop that over into our spawn cars and we're ready to go. So let's press play. Now each of these cars is going to have, yep, there's your spawn explosion from all of the physics. Now once they land, they're already programmed to follow the waypoints. So they'll figure themselves out eventually and off they'll go around the track. So they've all got exactly the same settings. Currently, there's no learning going on whatsoever. There's no genetic algorithm in here. It's just a whole bunch of those default cars that I started with. Okay, so you should have that going at this point. What we're gonna do is come back in the next video and we'll start programming in the chromosomes and the genes that these cars require so that we can then essentially breed them. If you'd like to support our work, like us on YouTube, visit our website holistic3d.com, look for our courses on holistic3dlearn.com or support us on Patreon.